when you go to jail or, or prison, you are, how you do your time is, is it, it's on you. Like you can go in there, you can cause a lot of trouble. You can have a, I had a chip on my shoulder in the beginning too. Um, then, you know, some of the uncles pulled me aside and said, hey, you want to go home, fucking drop it a couple levels. And, and you don't, there's nothing you have to prove in there. You know, I, I took their advice, saw the uncles and stuff. I spent a lot of my time in the art room. I took every class I could take in there. So I took Google SketchUp, Google Word, like uh, Microsoft Word, just whatever class they offered, dude, I signed up for it, man. When you're going home that, 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 that last week, you hit that gate and stuff, man, you can't sleep. You get really, you're antsy. You have a set of friends that you did everything with every fucking day. You worked out, you ate, you cooked with. And if anything popped off, fucking, you know, they're gonna be there. But that last week, it's like mentally, <laughs> you start to put like walls up already because you know you're going home. So, and they know you're going home too. And it's one of those things where you, you, you kind of just start like, like blocking them out. You know, oh, what's up, man? Oh. You know what I mean? Work out, whatever, do your own thing. You kind of, both of you guys kind of notice too. It's kind of weird. You and every your little crew that you work out with and, and you hang out with a lot, you're starting to like mentally break up with, with your little crew and stuff in there. And then, um, yeah, shit. I tell people like, I now will never experience this again in my life, dude. It is, it, that, it's the best feeling. And I will never fucking experience that shit in my life. You, you, you like, it, it don't, there, there's never gonna be a day when I got home, man. I'm just like, fuck, it's, it's done. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get emotional when I think about it. Cut. <laughs> I knew what was going on, man. You know, I tried to call, contact them and stuff and you know, they wouldn't write me back or anything like that. And you know, I'll call home and stuff and I can, I hear the word on the street, what's going on and stuff. And I was just like, ah, well, fuck that. You know, I started that, I created it. I'm gonna create something new. And whenever like, you know, like, it's just, it's, you don't have that competitive nature in me that when somebody does me wrong, you know, I, I want to beat them at that game or, or whatever, you know what I mean? So, you know, I started farmers, I started designing, I kept all like my sketchbooks and stuff and designing new stuff. And I was creating new concepts and, and you know, I knew when I got out, man, you know, I was going to see, you know, far, farmer's market be successful the way, you know, Defend Hawaii was successful and stuff. I knew it, I, you know, I saw it, you know, I saw it in my head a bunch of times, man. And, and, Farmer's Market Hawaii is, it's my other kid. You know, um, Defend Hawaii was my other kid. That's why I was so pissed off when, when things went south with that, because I created that. You know, that was like my child. Uh, you know, I made a lot of mistakes and a lot of crappy stuff happened with Defend Hawaii that I made sure that, okay, this time I'm not gonna go through that. I'm gonna like cross my T's and dot my I's now and I'm gonna make sure that, you know, it doesn't go that route. But I also want to, you know, give other people and work with people and create opportunities and, and get the bag together. I still want to do that. If you're trying to get the bag in a different way, like Allah, you, you don't need me. Go get the bag your way. You know, but you know, if but if you want to get money with me and you want to get the bag with me, man, I got a formula. Let's, let's get the bag together. So that's what farmers market means to me. This is like my other kid. So I, 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 met, I met Keone um, doing a prison bid, a five-year prison bid. I met him in Oregon, federal prison. Um, yeah, he was just, you know, we were like the weirdo aliens on the yard. At Sheridan, I was, you know, I was that guy that was like, you know, they would say, oh, there's a new Islander coming in. 
So right there, I, you know, I wait at intake. You know, I hit him up. I say, hey, you know, I introduce myself. Hey, what's up? My name is Keone. You know, what's your name? For all the new guys, you know what I mean? Like, they're, they always think you're trying to get up, you know, get off on them, you know? And I think he thought I was trying to, like, hit him up, you know? Like, you know, what set you claim? But I was just really asking him, where are you from, man? But um, right there, he's like, I'm from LA. And he kind of like walked off and I was like, all right, new guy. And uh, immediately clicked, immediately knew that this dude probably gonna be friends with him for the rest of my life. We just, you know, we just were just the weirdos on the yard. Creative, the artistic, still, you know, crack them all fucking in their skull. But yeah, that, that's where we met, Oregon. You know, I saw him at the unit later on and, you know, I just chopped it up with him. You know, oh, so what, you from LA and you grew up over there? And, you know, and just started like talking story and stuff with him. Then I took him to the art room. I was like, oh yeah, I got a seat in here. You know, you got to wait in line for a seat. In the art room, actually, there's a five-year waiting list to get into this tiny art room there. It's a, a five-year waiting list and politics being what they are inside, he was able to get me in my own seat and we just smashed, we smashed. You know, whether it was paintings or drawings or whether it was even just talking about techniques and things that he was good at, that I was terrible at, things that I was good at, that he was terrible at. We just sparred. We just started creating art and fuck, you know, it's working out in the morning and shit too. So yeah, we was just like instantly like best friends and shit. So I had moved to Los Angeles. I was fighting for custody of my son when I got out. And um, you know, I, I had gotten into tech. He was in LA at the same time I was in LA, and you know I took him to like a little swanky dinner place to grab drinks and eat and stuff. And you know he took me to his, you know he was working at a startup, a tech startup at that time. I was like, wow, this place is fucking cool. We it's the first time we had seen each other since we both got out. He was in Hawaii, I was in Los Angeles. First time he uh, came and I showed him this tech thing that I was working on. You know he showed me what he was working on. And we just ate and was like, you know, didn't miss, miss a beat. You know, we had some drinks and stuff, and he was like, hey, did you get some crypto and stuff? And I was just like, oh, nah, man, you can't buy anything with that, dude. I, I, I didn't understand it. Yeah, I don't, I, like, I, for it, it took me years to really understand crypto and blockchain. You've probably heard of things like Bitcoin or Dogecoin. Bitcoin at one point today lost 30% of it. Cryptocurrency was considered a risky alternative investment. It could hold even more potential for people investing in crypto. Job growth is surging in the cryptocurrency field. I had invested in the idea more so than the actual tangible thing. I was a proponent of this idea that it was transparent, that you know the banks didn't control it. It was giving power back to the people. I feel it was an opportunity missed back then. So when he called me up recently and said, hey, we gotta jump on this NFT thing, man. Um, there's a lot of money in it. I think, we'll, I think we'll kill it. And I was just like, I'm on board, man. That's the first time I mentioned crypto to him without knowing that Hawaiians at that point had been completely cut out of the brokerage of this crypto. I had no idea that this entire population of people that you know, theoretically, this is why it was made, was to empower the community, was being cut out. If you can do it in California and you can do it, you know, throughout the greater United States, why is it that we're not, in Hawaii, we're not being allowed to, you know, invest and, and play in that space also? Yo, fuck these guys, man. We're gonna find a way around it. We're gonna fucking do it. And we're gonna, and we're gonna teach everybody else how to do it too. Cause that $1.2 million for a, price tag on a medium home in Hawaii, Hawaiians can't even afford to live here anymore. Bitcoin is a little bit, you know, ugly. It can only be used for that one thing, but what it did do was spark the innovation. One of the innovations that it sparked was Ethereum. Ethereum works the same way. It's an operating system. You can run anything that you can do with Windows, on Windows, or iOS, or OS X, you can do on Ethereum. One of those things that they found a way to do on Ethereum is these smart contracts that lead to these NFTs, non-fungible tokens. NFT is art-based, so it's, it caters to me. It's something that, you know, I need to be a part of, and I can't miss the bus again. So when he called me up recently and said, hey, we gotta jump on this NFT thing, man. Um, there's a lot of money in it. I think we'll, I think we'll kill it. 
getting back to Keone being one of the handful of people in prison that actually did what he said he was going to do, that thing that he did um, was actually a physical version of these NFTs. He made hats and his ability to take a hat, sell it for $40 and then have a secondary market at you know, for $400 for this cap is exactly what we're seeing in the NFT space right now. You already have experience in doing this. You have already done this exactly. You don't understand the technology part of it, but don't worry about that part. Like, I am understanding the technology side and it's not, once you get, get the hang of it, it's not really that difficult to grasp. We are applying that model that he has already found success with in the physical world to the digital world. We're trying to create um, NFTs and create a space, but also do something good for the community too. So, so we're gonna travel, like we're gonna do like a little tour throughout Hawaii and wherever we're staying to pull inspiration from, whether it's color palettes of wherever we're staying at, we want to give back to 5013. Like if 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 the NFTs do good you know, a, a portion of that sale will always go back to the community for its digital life. And, you know, I, I thought that was a great idea that he came up with and, you know, I was just like, fuck, I'm on board, man. You know, we're creating win-wins. How can, how can that not be a good thing? soul of this project is one to return the environmental implications that have been tossed to give it back to the environment give it to the community um, that we're creating them in but also until we figure out how to lift the restrictions on Ho native hawaiians owning or um, buying this we're going to figure out a way to give it to them and this is how we're going to do it so yeah I moved to Hilo. Well, there's there's a few factors why I moved to Hilo. First off, it's a, it's still affordable. You know, it's the last affordable place in Hawaii. You know how far you know how well farmers market did and stuff. Um, it's kind of an escape. You know, when I wanted like, you know, it's in the it, it's very country, and I like being anonymous. My baby's mom, my daughter's mom's family is from there. So all my kids' cousins live there too. Yeah, so that's kind of a cool thing, growing up with your cousins and stuff. And you don't want to give them that also. And plus we have a house, man. I bought a house. I own a house, so. Um, what attracted me to Keone was that he's super funny. And yeah, he always just made me laugh, no matter what, no matter where we were. I also love that he was very open with me and like told me like everything right from the jump. He's a fun dad. He just loves his kids so much. I need a creative space. So I was kind of looking for just an office because at the time, dude, my house in the area didn't even have Wi-Fi. Like you couldn't get internet where I live. I need an office, I need a creative space that has internet. And so, you know, we figure out a budget and then right there, but Hilo was so affordable. I was like, okay, we figure out a budget for my office, but for $400, I could get this space that's this big and I can split it in half and have my office and creative space in the back, but also can put a retail area in the front. So now I have my little off brand and, you know, um, I did, and I had an art gallery where I'd hang all my, you know, artwork and stuff. And at first it just started off as private showings. You know, I had a note on the thing for a private showing, you wanna purchase anything. I left a number, you call this number and we'll, you know, I'll make an appointment. It's a, um, so the sale is when they used to sail and they used to run up into it. I'm gonna go home, work on some shit cause I gotta babysit my son cause mom's going out tonight. 
But we still need to get this shit cracking. See right here? This is random. This isn't for the gram. Bruh. This is my everyday thing. Great. I just feel like someday you might look like your mom, maybe. Should I be more? So Broken Heart and Gallery, in my point of view, it was just really fun, very light, and just energetic in there. We always had like good music and good vibes, and just a lot of good friends around. I don't know where this came from. <laughs> Sorry. So everything is burnt. This spot is toast. Good plastic melted. So if you look at the wall right here, you can see where the heat was coming from. None of it on the bottom is burned. Oh, yeah. It's all coming from the top. It's a tough one for all of us. <laughs> you know, like, um, it's kind of like our, it's kind of like a second home, yeah, for all of us. And so we got a lot of good memories. Okay, Chris. My kids are hurt by this. I heard that my kids are hurt by this. What is this right here? This whole NFT thing has been a process. It's a process that you know, I'm still learning about um, on top of trying to, uh, trying to process what happened at my art gallery during the middle, in fact, probably like the most crucial point of this like NFT project, you know, fuck, I lost everything, man. Yeah, it's... If it looks like, if it looks like I'm not bothered by what happened, like I am, I just hide it super good. That that gallery represented um, safety, kind of emotional safety. Like no matter what's going on, like in my personal life, it can just be going to shit at home, like. You know, then I go there, then I'm just like, you know, you feel, 
like a sense of relief. And then, you know, I can look around at artwork that was given to me by my friends and things that I bought that inspire me culturally, spiritually, and creatively. We are going to work probably as hard as either one of us has, has worked since we got out to come up with a set of these NFTs. And a portion of the resale values of, value of these things will always go back to the community forever. After we're dead, the resale of these things will go to benefit the community. We're actually taking um, NFTs and giving them to the community and community leaders who have kept the community intact and strong, um, those foundationals. And it's all coming back to the, to, to the core idea of what this really is. It is empowering the community with a technology that they have been shut out of. We are going to use the current rules that are in place to do it legally um, and with an artistic flair. For us to be able to give a portion of that back to the community, you know, the community that has been shut out of is the goal. Fuck, bro. Thank you guys. Man, I needed something good to happen in my life right now. Like, Everything will make you feel a certain way. You know, some things are painful, some things are exciting, you know, um, some things are melancholic too, but there's a, you can associate a certain feeling with everything, you know, whether it's food or relationships or um, environment, they'll always make you feel the way actually you want to feel. So everything is a feeling, everything's attached to feelings and stuff.